And in my files panel down here, notice how I have that index.html page. I'm going to go ahead and double click on index.html. And here's the sort of basic styling that I've already done. And what I want to do is I want to have more control over this content. And I'm going to do that by using CSS. Uh, but I've, I've kind of tricked you a little bit because anytime you're editing page properties for a page, you're actually making CSS as you do that. That's what this means right here. CSS, cascading style sheets for appearance, for links, for headings. So if you do add any of those properties, it actually makes that CSS. But let's take a closer look at it. So I'll click Cancel. And I want you to open up your CSS styles panel. In fact, I'll minimize that insert panel. Just kind of stretch out that CSS styles panel. If you don't have it open, just go to Window, CSS Styles. But if you take a look in here, here are all these styles that are currently associated with this page. Uh, it's, it's pretty darn nice. And what I can do with any one of these is I can go ahead and edit it. Take, for instance, like the H2, the Heading 2, which happens to be this one right down here, this Heading 2. And it, again, it says it right here, Heading 2. I can just double click on it. I have the ability to edit the CSS rule definition. So from in here, I can sure enough change the color to uh, just like an orange color and click apply. Now obviously you have a lot more control you can do in here, many more options in dealing with the font. It's definitely pretty powerful, so I really encourage you to uh, check out these different options, especially in the type category. Uh, I'll click OK. Let's take, for instance, like the, uh, the body. I might want to edit the background and how the background works, because currently uh, the background scrolls with the content of this web page. But if I double click on body and I take a look at the background category, notice how I have the background color. And it's really just pointing to this image. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to control the background attachment. Again, this is not available in the Page Properties panel. What I can do instead is I can click and select Fixed. So what that's going to do is it's going to uh, lock down the background so it doesn't scroll when you scroll the page for your content. I'll click OK. And I'll just save this page and preview this in a browser. So go to File, Preview in Browser, select whatever browser is listed. And there's the content. If I sort of shrink up the browser, I can scroll. And sure enough, that background is going to be fixed, but the content moves. But still, I feel like this page needs a lot of work. So uh, I'm going to be do doing some more styling. I actually want to stylize this box. I want to make it to where uh, we have more padding uh, around the text and around the image. And not only that, but I want to make sure that the, uh, the content scales with the browser. So if I shrink it down like this, I want this content to always be centered and not really get cut off like that. So that's the goal, and that's what I want to do with the CSS. So let me go back into Dreamweaver. And again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to locate this content div. Okay, So if I just click in the upper left, just click in the upper left, notice how this says content right here. This is the CSS element. And over here in the CSS styles panel, it's right here as well. So I'm going to double click on it. And that opens up that CSS rule definition. So we'll go beyond the type and the background, beyond the block, and we'll get into this box. So this is a, a box model we can deal with. Uh, currently, it's set to 800 pixels wide. That works out great. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to give it some more padding. So right in here for top, I'm just going to type in 10. And it will do the same for all of the sides. I can click Apply. And if I just sort of uh, move this out of the way, you can see how it adds some padding around that text. Now for the margin, this is sort of the, the margin around this box that I want to deal with. Okay, So I want to make sure it's always in the center. So I want these, these columns, these side parts right here, uh, to automatically adjust. 
okay, just the left and the right side. So I need to uncheck margin, and for the right side, I want it to automatically adjust, so I'll just type in auto, just like that. For left, I'll type in auto as well. And for the top, let's just like type in 180 pixels, just to kind of give it some room at the top. I can type in zero in here. But no, what's most important is the fact that I type in auto in there, okay? Now that is gonna give me um, some adjustable space on the sides, but I need to make sure that there's no absolute positioning uh, applied to this CSS rule definition. So I'm gonna click on down through here and I encourage you to explore all of these categories, but I'm gonna go down to positioning. So select positioning. Sure enough, there it is, absolute positioning. That's what I don't want. I'll just select that word and delete it. Notice how it has this placement right here. It's trying to place it in absolute position. Select that text and just hit delete. So just clear out those three uh, dialog boxes there and then click apply and you should see that box move down. That's quite a bit of space up here at the top. Uh, and again, I can always jump back in here and adjust any of this content. That's that top 180 pixels. I can drop that back down to 100, click apply, and now it moves it up. Uh, but I go ahead and click OK. And I'd say that's looking pretty good for my page so far. Except for, say for instance, this image. But let's go ahead and view this in a browser. So I'm going to go to File, Preview in Browser, and I'm going to select Safari. Now it does ask me to save the page, so I will select yes. And here it is. I'll just click refresh. Uh, but it looks pretty darn good. And sure enough, it scales and it's always in the center. That's what I like. Like it's a panel that's kind of floating in space. That looks really good. In fact, if I sort of shrink up the size of this browser and I scroll, the content moves but the background doesn't. This is looking really good. This is, this is what I want to do. So I want to make one more edit to this image because obviously you can see how that image sort of butts up right against that text and I want to give that image more padding. And in order to do that, I need to make a new CSS rule. So it's not about modifying any CSS rules already defined. I want to make a new CSS rule for images. So I'll close this browser go back into Dreamweaver. I'll just select that image. And over in my CSS styles panel, I want to go ahead and add a CSS rule. So down at the bottom of that panel, select that page with the plus sign, new CSS rule, and then you'll be given this dialog box. So let's take a look at this real fast. If I just choose a selector type, so uh, let's just take a look at this, and I want to keep this simple, uh, but really fast, I can make a class, which can be applied to any HTML element, seems pretty powerful. I can make an ID, which would be applied to only one element on the page. That's not going to work for me, because what if I have multiple images? Okay, So I might not want to select that. And I don't want to select a specific tag, because if I select tag, it will apply it to every image. So again, just to recap, uh, I don't want to select tag, because that will apply it to every image. An ID will only apply it to one image or one element. Uh, class seems the most flexible, and that's what I'm going to choose. I'm not even going to worry about compound either. But again, I'm going to select a specific class I'm going to make, and we'll just call this content image. OK? OK, so the selector name will apply to your rule, will apply your rule to all HTML elements with the class content image. I like how it gives me that note. I'll click OK. As soon as I do that, I get to define that rule that I'm creating. And from here, I'll go down to uh, Box. And I can go ahead and adjust the padding for this. So I can you know, type in, again, 10 pixels, click Apply. And when I click Apply, notice how it didn't apply it to that image. Now, did I do something wrong? No, I'm just not done yet. So just go ahead and select OK, because again, I've created this CSS rule right here. And what I need to do is make sure this image has that class applied to it. So select whatever image you want to add some padding to in this case. Select that image. If I have it selected, 
I will uh, go down to my properties panel right down here and you can see where it says class I can go ahead and select content image and this is for any class that's created will be listed right in here in this case content image and it just gives it that nice sort of buffer around that image and now you can see my page is looking a lot better so you can see the power of CSS uh, giving me more control over the content, where things are positioned, how they look, and I really encourage you to check out all the various properties you can, you can do in that CSS styles panel. Uh, but another real powerful thing about CSS is it, it's basically isolated in its own area on this page. So let's take a look at that now. If I select any one of these elements, I can even select you know, content, and I'll just do a right click on it. So do a right click or control click if you're on a Mac and then select go to code. That will change your layout view to split view. And sure enough, it takes me to that CSS right up there. It takes me to uh, that specific uh, rule, that, that rule definition. But I can scroll down and see all of those various rules. And this is what I was talking about earlier, separating the style or the design of the page, as you can see, from the actual content, which is below. So this makes it pretty easy to work with. And again, what I can do is not only view the CSS, but I can, of course, modify any of this if I wanted to as well. So it's really up to you how you want to manipulate your CSS. It's nice that it's consolidated right up here for this one page. Uh, but what if I want to uh, use this same CSS style for multiple pages? That's really what I want to do. So uh, since I've modified this code, notice how in the CSS styles panel it says, you know, you've made changes, so just hit refresh. But again, I want to move this CSS into a new page. So I can select. If I do a shift click on the bottom one and then click on the top one, basically just selecting all of these uh, rules, I can select them all and do a right click or control click if you're on a Mac. And then I want you to select move CSS rules. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's move them to a new style sheet. So select a new style sheet click OK, and now I can save it out. And I'm going to save it out as Paulo CSS. But I don't want to save it just right here in this, in this My Site folder. I want to create a new folder. And that really is like a best practice uh, when you're setting up the structure of your site. So I'll create a new folder by clicking New Folder. And I'll just type in CSS for the name, click Create. And again, that's where this CSS is going to go. I'll click Save, and it moves all of those rules into that other page. So if you look at my CSS Styles panel, you'll see that you'll have all of those rules listed out nice and neat. And it's just subtle differences when you're dealing with an external style sheet. Obviously, you see this says Palo CSS. Even right over here underneath index HTML, it even separates out the source code. If I take a look at that source code, I have this source code and it gives me this link and it points to that CSS. And what's nice about Dreamweaver is it actually lists out any CSS pages associated with that page. It will list them out right here. So again, I can just click on that and I can see this separate page. Here's all of the CSS. Uh, very nice. And uh, really the last thing I need to do is I can save all the pages or I can save all the related files. Again, since the CSS page is related to that index HTML, I can just save all of them. Uh, but really, the last step is just the fun part of previewing it in the browser of your choice, just like that. And I'll just click Refresh. Really no change here, but the point is, is that CSS is external from the site. I can now create multiple pages and link them all to that CSS page, making this really flexible. So that's the next step, is to start to really build out the site with some website navigation, which will be done in the next lesson.